The Australian Labour Party has pledged to reintroduce the Australian Interactive Games Fund if voted in during the country's upcoming elections on May 18th. It's notable to see a prominent political party campaigning using video game focused policies, and the proposed reinstatement of the funding program would be a big win for Australian game developers. As reported by Kotaku, Labour would bring back the initiative, which was scrapped back in 2018, by establishing a $25 million kit that would be dished out in the form of grants over the course of three years. The Labour Party claims the fund would help reinvigorate Australia's game development sector by giving studios old and no way to access finance and grow as a business. Restarting the fund will kickstart the rapid growth of our games development sector through the establishment of new game studios in Australia. Investment and projects flowing into existing Australian studios and the range of joint ventures. Reads Labour's policy. This will enable a variety of works and the generation of original intellectual property in long form games, apps, virtual reality, and augmented reality with output across the arts, communications, digital economy, innovation, education, training health, defense, and more. Newsbrief, Square Enix, has trademarked the name of Octopath Travelers, i.e. 2D, graphical style in Europe. As reported by Jamato, the Japanese developer publisher has trademarked the terms, i.e. 2D, and i.e. 2D. The company has used both to describe the Switch PGS unique art style which combines one 6-bit character sprites on textures with polygonal 3D environments and high-definition effects. It's an interesting move, and one that suggests Square has plans to use the phrase again in the future. Be it to describe another Octopath title, or perhaps even a new franchise that employs the same graphical style. We have a storefront now to big the power storefront. It's not going to be the big all and all either. That's the Epic Games, founder Tim Sweeney, speaking to Gunnar Sutra at DD2000, on Mountain earlier this week, about how the launch of Epic's new game store is going. While the Epic Games store's debut late last year drew decks, attention, and games, in large part, due to the LA and review share rate that sees game makers taking home. 88% of their revenues, Sweeney is keen to frame it as just a funny early version of a thing that's going to ultimately be a lot bigger and a lot different. I think the future of game discovery cannot just be about storefronts, he said. It's going to be a lot of mechanisms, citing everything from mobile chat clients, like WeChat or Twitch streamers as increasingly valuable venues for getting your game in front of potential players. All valid. But Epic's Spartan storefront seems to be rapidly filling up with prominent games, and devs could be forgiven for wondering whether Epic's general five share rate, compared to the industry standard 70 thirtieths, might change in the future. Once the Epic Game Store has a large enough customer base, this is not like a loss later type of business for us. 12% is our permanent rate, and it includes plenty of margin for Epic. To a no healthy and profitable business, Sweeney told Gunnar Sutra, we could have done lower. But we also really wanted to build a lasting business that works for us, and we feel a natural revolution to services where they are in a free as subsidized and they are paid for through a tax that is worse than money. It was a less than subtle shot at companies like Google, Apple, and Facebook, all of which offer games and services at low, a no, cost but, in Sweeney's eyes, expect too much in return. There's nothing worse for paying for a good in a price that's worse than money, and with Google search or Facebook, 
that price is your privacy, and in some walled garden storefronts, that price is your rights as a customer. He continued, of course, the Epic Games Store has already caught some public criticism for the way it handles user data, most notably the way in which the X launcher pulls Steam Friends data from users. Machines before they elect to import their Steam Friends list into the Epic Launcher, Sweeney has already said it was an ill-intended oversight that LLB corrected in an upcoming update, and today he noted that another unintended, albeit fruitful, consequence of the Epic Games Store's practice of giving out free games to registered users. The process of releasing a free game every two weeks receive for one reason, but we are hugely doubling down on it for another reason, Sweeney said, the initial reason was we felt we had to acquire, we had to bring in a lot of users, who had not over the wise seen other star, and releasing cool games for free seemed like a good way to do that, so we put tens of millions of dollars towards that initiative. But what we have seen since is that that's been far more successful than ever expected. Sanotic brought in far and a half million downloads, and it turns out that by paying developers in order for the right to release their game for two weeks, we are actually supporting those developers and we are also building awareness of their games. Sweeney pitches this a big well, while you add for everyone involved. Devs get paid and grow their audience even as Epic does the same. We actually find it's more economical to bring users to the Epic Store by giving away free games than by paying Facebook or Google to run ads for their store. He adds, and that's awesome, because that money would just be going into the pockets of a giant corporation. Whereas the money we are spending now is going towards developers to make more games. A stream of customers are now pouring into Epic's new storefront as a result of those developers, games, and Sweeney claims the company will continue to regulate the flow of games, launching on the store line, order to try and ensure each one has a reasonable expectation of getting customers' attention. In the very early days, we are hand curating all of the games on our storefront, he said. We wanted to make sure that the pace of games coming into the store did not outpace the rate of customers coming into the store. It's been a very deliberate process. In the future, the plan is to open the Epic Games Store up to self-publishing, though Sweeney is quick to note that we are going to apply a reasonably high-quality filter. So we are not going to see asset flips, and we are going to explicitly say no to porn games, or other intentionally controversial games, Sweeney continued. We are perfectly fine with unrated experiences like talk of a crime, but we are not the place for the other stuff, for the bigger anti-social things. That's significantly different from Valve, which broadly takes a hands-off approach to moderating which games are allowed on Steam in favor of giving customers tools to filter what they see. It's also a much clearer stance than Steam's owners tend to take, given that while they recently managed to both ban a game about sexual violence and also not explicitly condemn it. So what decides whether a game is a good fit for the Epic Game Store? Oh, there will be humans, Sweeney said. We have people working that already. For example, in the Unreal Engine marketplace, we have standards on the existing processes we can apply to moderate the Epic Game Store. Amid all this talk of standards, Sweeney explicitly draws a line between the Unreal Engine side of the business and the storefront side. Unreal Engine is a way of expressing your ideas. Anybody. Under our standard license, it's free to use Unreal Engine for building anything that's legal, and we have no say over it, he said. We have renounced that ability in our license. But on the other hand, 
where Epic is making something available to our customers. Like in Fortnite, on the Epic Game Store, we are going to apply an Epic quality standard to it. This dovetails a bit too cleanly with Sony's vision of a future game industry, where storefronts are more competitive wound up against the more varied ways of distributing games. In that future a rejection from the Epic Game Store will not hurt a game's prospects, because it will have so many other ways to find an audience. Sweeney thinks that's already the case, given that a PC is now brimming with competing online game storefronts, and he says has not terribly worried about unduly harming a game that does not make the cut. We are not discriminating against any games, based on their speech. Because the PC is an open platform, he said, if we do not choose to carry their game, they can release it directly to customers. I'll sell it through other stores if they choose.